And it's obviously fantastic that this is happening today in the middle of the fashion week here at Bench. And uh, we will try to tease out some, some things around uh, well, where business concepts might be going and how we might challenge fashion business concepts today and also what sustainability might imply for our relationships with users. I will try very hard today not to use the word consumer. I think that's an important shift in itself actually. We've got some very knowledgeable and interesting people with us here today. And so we've got Per Granqvist, who is an advisor on sustainability and recently came out with the book CSR in practice in Swedish. And we've got Henrik Lampa, who's environmental coordinator at H&M. René Andersson, uh, responsible for CSR at Indiska. Marcus Bergman, Swedish School of Textiles, University of Boros, and also managing director of Eco Cotton. And last but absolutely not least, it's my great pleasure to welcome Kaito Hori. And Kaito comes from uh, the Paris-based uh, company Commune. And they started in 2005. And when they did that, they actually started with the very principles of, of uh, environmental issues and so forth. So it's, it will be very interesting to hear what Kaito can share with us today. Thank you. And you'll hear more from these people, or you haven't heard from them at all yet actually, but you will hear from them. <laughs> You've only heard from me so far, uh, very soon. And you are, lots of people here, and that's amazing. And you are actually a great mix of people as well, because you are students, you are industry, people working in the industry as designers, as buyers and so forth. We've got a couple of politicians and obviously press and many, many more. And I think it's a great uh, sign of the time that so many of you have shown up here today. And we, we really wel welcome you. The, the, language here, the, language, the language here today will be English to be inclusive to our guests, and we've got some people in the audience as well who, who are not Swedish speakers, but as you can tell from me, it's already Swinglish, and we hope that you <laughs> still feel that you're well, very welcome to ask questions, and if you want to do so in Swedish, I'll be happy to try at least to translate. Just to set the scene, uh, uh, just a couple of months ago, a uh, lot of us met in, in Copenhagen at the Fashion Summit, which was arranged by NICE, which is Nordic Initiative Clean and Ethical, and which obviously coincided with a large uh, climate change conference organized by the UN. And again there, there were about 500 of us from the, from the Nordic countries working in the fashion industry, and that really shows how big the interest is today. We've had about 10 years in some cases of CSR, we see that big companies like H&M and Walmart and Sarah are pushing the, the supply by demanding a lot of organic cotton. We've seen events in, in New York, in Paris, in London, and obviously here in Stockholm focused on sustainable fashion. So a lot of stuff is happening. We've also got really interesting companies starting out from the very principles of sustainability. But yet, if we return to Copenhagen again, we also see that whereas there are some very positive tipping points in fashion, there are also some very alarming tipping points in nature. So we are at the state now where biodiversity loss is accelerating. We are at the state where climate change is <coughs> really threatening our, our, our survival here on Earth. So we in the fashion industry, we need to up our game a bit, so to speak. We've seen a first generation of sustainability strategies and practice, fantastic. Now it's the time to, to move on and, and, and also take action and move more quickly. And so who best to help us think about these things but the people who are here today. And I'd like you to just start, we we'll go around if we start there. If you can just say something, where are you coming from at the moment? So sort of your interface to sustainability at the moment, if you will, your reality and the challenge. A couple of minutes that you want to put on the table. And we'll return to those challenges very, very soon as well. Uh, thank you. Um, being, being an advisor to a number of large corporations, I'm, none of our in, is in the uh, fashion industry. I have a slightly different perspective, but I think, still think it's uh, applicable here because one of the major issues now is that to make the transition from selling products to selling services. Rather than buying a car, you will rent a car. Buying, and buying a handbag, you will rent a handbag. Uh, I think that's some of the issues I'm struggling with at the moment to understand. And also, 
how to communicate what you're doing to customers, um, not in a grand way, sort of making ads in the newspaper, but rather in sort of small way. When you buy a product, how can you see that it's actually sustainable, and how can you sort of a, a physical um, manifestation of that, being it uh, in the labels of the clothing uh, or being it at the back of a product and so on. I think that's how we trying to engage Excellent. That. So how we can move from a product-focused society perhaps to services and also how we can perfect our communication in a way. Excellent. And Henrik, what, what's your reality at the moment and what's your challenge? Yeah, well, we are currently just reorganizing ourselves within CSR. We are now the CSR support department because we don't longer sort of own the conscience of CSR issues. It's it's the different managers out in the organization doing that. So we are supposed to support them. And then my, I work with product-focused uh, CSR manager for that. Uh, and then I was working two days before Christmas out in our store up, up in Umeå and meeting the guys deciding every day success or failure for us, which is the customers. Uh, and realizing also that the delicate challenge we have when we are developing new things, new sort of concepts that are environmentally smarter or, or new materials, if we don't manage to make them understand that, why should they, what's the added value for that? I think that is a big challenge for us. How can we present that? How can we be humble enough to listen to them because we have to walk hand in hand with them? We cannot do this alone and, and run away because then we will be an obscure company. So I think that dialogue, how can you do that? when you typically just engage with them in a very short time period when they are in the store. Mm -hmm. So I think that is a, a challenge for us and for, for a lot of companies that want to move the customers and also wants to be moved by the customer because it can be in that way as well towards uh, a more sustainable product or concept or so on. I think that's very interesting because in, in, the, in the past I think we very much seen sustainability work as cleaning up our pro processes, so in, in the factories and so forth, and we're definitely now talking about a different relationship perhaps with the, with the user as well, how we can, and maybe it is something we need to do to communicate in a better way as well. I'm sure that's something you're facing as well, René. Yes. Uh, we are a much smaller company than H&M, uh, of course, but we have been working very hard with these issues for many, many years. And for us, sustainability has three E's, uh, economy, environment, and ethics. And uh, I agree with Henrik that uh, uh, now we also, we also uh, involve all, everybody who are uh, employed by Indiska, uh, 700 people in 86 uh, stores. And uh, we had, we, the, the Swedish trade, uh, Federation made a uh, research uh, recently, and they were looking at uh, uh, if, if to organize for responsibility to see if if you work with uh, with CSR, is it all the way from the top management to to the shops? And they found yes, it is, that is the case with Indiska. But just as Hendrik said, and that was also in the north, they made uh, interviews with uh, 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 with the shop my colleagues in the shops in the south of Sweden and uh, here in around Stockholm area and in the north and uh, there are quite a lot of questions from customers from from uh, the south and Stockholm area but uh, my colleagues in the north they said working in the shops they said now we are so we are so proud of working for a company who who, who deals with CSR and we are so well educated and we just we are waiting for the for the questions 